try some different skills than I did last time. To make fire, I may still make a fire roll, but if I do it, it'll either be out, it'll be out of yucca. So charcoal's not gonna be the issue, but I'll have to process those yucca fibers in order to make a fire roll out of it. In there there's the wing with my jacket covering that up and my, brought the bag with me again today it's got the pack raft in it and it also has the mosquito net and the cover I'm not gonna put the cover up right now because as you can see that provides enough shade so as the Sun goes along this will this will kind of move easterly as the Sun goes west the shadow is gonna move east and so that'll provide me some pretty good protection right there. Find all sorts of crap washed up on the beach. It looks like it's been out here for a while. Um, I don't know if you can make any kind of spindle out of that um, stem. That's freaking awesome. That's some coconut husk right there. Now that's, that's pretty damp, pretty wet. But if I can find another drier piece of that, that would be a good option. This is this is just too wet. I don't think I can make that work. It's probably been in the seawater way too long, but that would be an option as a fire roll if I can find a drier piece of that. All right, I've got to watch out for rattlesnakes back in here. They love this stuff. There's all these little ground squirrels that they feed on. I have to process this stuff to get all the little white fibers out and get as much cellulose material out as possible. And so if I can't find a coconut husk dry enough to use, I'll use this for the fire roll. But I've never tried to use these dry leaves. So um, I'm going to take some of those with me and see if they take less processing. So if I don't find a coconut husk, that would give me an alternative. I've got some of the yucca stalks here. So if I have to, I can use a bow drill. This one is about as thick as my pinky. So I can make a gas pedal hand drill or a thumb loop hand drill, whatever I need. And then if I don't need these, then I'll use them as part of my tinder bundle because it's got such a low ignition temperature, it's perfect out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of this dry yucca and green yucca. I found a aluminum beer bottle. So we can use that to distill water if we have to try to find something bigger. This is freaking perfect. So I found these underneath the sand. And uh, I can use this one as my base for my fire roll. Either one of those would really work. Actually, this one may work better because it's 
a little longer. I mean, it doesn't have this big hole in it. It's not that it's longer, it's just not as good. That is perfect. Anyway, I'm gonna take these with me. So here's some charcoal that hasn't been saturated, hadn't been wet. So, um, really super dry. This is gonna be my best source for the fire roll. I can bust that up and shouldn't have any issue getting a fire roll going. All right, these reeds right here make for really good, make for a really good tinder bundle, especially the smaller leaves. If I can break that off, this stuff right here. All right, right now I'm crushing up that charcoal. I'm gonna try to get it to a really fine powder. I've got plenty of it. Got the coconut husk ready to dump the charcoal on it, so I'm gonna run the charcoal down it. So I'm gonna take this, oops, and get some of the fine powder here. I still gotta chop some of this up. And I'm gonna layer it all the way down through there, but I've gotta get it, I gotta get it powdered better than it is. It needs to be finer than that. It needs to be like this consistency here. Actually finer than that. Okay, so I found this piece of aluminum here that I think I can bend. Also found that piece of rebar that's actually almost the perfect length. I could just bend this part out here and use that as a bow. Okay, depending on if that's a soft wood or not, I want to make a bearing block out of that so I can get this fire made. I took my shoelaces off and uh, tied a tape knot in them and then clove hitches at the end and uh, this is what I'm going to use as a socket there's my spindle and my fireboard's ready to go so we're going to try to knock this bad boy out and see if we can make this work and get a fire going and I'm going to use um, my failed effort at the coconut husk fire roll I'm going to use that as a tinder bundle hopefully it's not too wet to take a spark and if not, I've got the yucca leaves ready and that cane that I, that I found earlier, I can use that. some of the yucca in that I wasn't going to use for a spindle and then um, we use the coconut husk as our tinder bundle and now we're just gonna burn down some of this stuff like this is part of the pallet that's the thing that I try to use for fire roll this is what I use for charcoal and um, we'll just get that stuff to burn again I bet you I could walk a couple steps and find in fact I see some right now so if I just walk over here and I know I mentioned this in my last video but there's some sea purslane right there. 
salty, um, not as nutritious as the purslane you'll find in. There's a crab hole. I'll probably dig down and get some crabs to not if I wanted a, a meat source, but there's prickly pear in there behind the dunes. So we're out here in the dunes looking for prickly pear. And then there's some prickly pear. But you can see a lot of prickly pear. Some big old prickly pear over there. And these up here have the fruits on them. But they would be a better option to eat um, than the pads themselves. I could eat them just like you would eat the pads. And you gotta watch out for the glockids. There's little hairs on there that you need to really burn off. But those are some pretty big prickly pear. These are late in the season, like in San Antonio, they're already ripe and the deer have already eaten most of them. But down here, I, I don't know, they may grow several times throughout the year because it's so warm down here. good so I can eat that It'd be better if it was ripe but it is edible and there may be some ripe ones so I'm gonna walk around and see if I can't find some ripe ones burn these glockids off and then I'll I can eat these so what I'm doing right now is I'm burning the glockids off these little be fine little hairs and you can see kind of see where they're at oops right around there Ooh, that's hot. And I'm just burning those off real quick. I'm gonna cut this off and show you how much juice is inside one of these. So I've got a bunch more that I can gather up. Oh, you can see how much uh, juice was in that prickly pear. You can strain that through a sock, a bullet first, especially if you've used a sock, but or a piece of clothing like this shirt right here. If it was warm enough and I didn't need the sleeve, I could use it like cheesecloth. I would boil it first, and then um, I would boil the piece of clothing first. But you can cut that skin off if you don't have a fire to burn off the blockage. Probably flavor my water with the other ones and eat a couple of them, but that is super juicy make jams jelly wine if you're at an area where you can and add sugar to it but out if you're just surviving these can provide a lot of juice all right so i brought water with me this time so that i wouldn't have to get in a rush and distill water so i've got plenty of water and if i get and if it starts to get low um I can distill some water like I did last time. If you want to see how I did that on the beach, or just what I found on the beach, just watch my last video. Mm -hmm. 